I, I'm not going to throw them away because I got to thinking, you know what we ought to do? Mm. I got a chop saw somewhere amongst this pile of debris. I'd like to make a cutaway of one of those. All right. You know what I mean? Even if the motor's junk, we can still turn the crank and make the pistons move on, on the cutaway version of it. Well, you know, I, I had a guy in England who wrote to me, and he said, he said I would, he said if I could buy that engine from you and get it here, I would buy it just to have it in my living room, make a coffee table out of it. Yeah. He said they're so cool, yeah. you know. And boy, you got this thing looking good. The only problem with this one, and it's not, I don't believe it's a problem. Some say it's terminal, and some say it isn't. Is the erosion between the cylinders and the valves? All right. But that's outside the gasket area. All right. It's not a compression problem. You know, it might be a flow problem or something. And if I was looking to get 300 hus out of this, that would be an issue. But All right. for the sake of going bombing around to a parade, that doesn't really bother anybody. No. Like this right here, you can weld these up. Right. Then deck it off. But by the time you've done that, you got more money tied up in an old block than what you got tied up in one you can go buy that's running. Right. And do you know, and just do a rebuild on. I seen a, a guy named Resto Dan out in Texas, yep. and he had a he had a small block Chevy that had that 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 had uh, um, run between the jackets. I don't know exactly remember how it was. And in the car, he took a welder, yep. welded it up, ground it down, put the gasket on there, yep. and is driving it. You we did know. that to some old Hercules uh, stationary engines. Yeah. The place I used to work down the good ones. We welded them up. Yeah. Hit them with a grinder. Two new gaskets on them, and the way they went, and they ran carnival rides, and, this, they, and they ran a lot. Is this thing turning over yet? Nope. Well, it looks good. You sure did a good job getting it all cleaned up and prettied up and looking good. Yeah, that had uh, the heads on that motor right there are usable. Those both those heads are broke, and look at the pistons and the. Thing. That thing must have had quite a hard life there. <laughs> if you flip that block upside down and yeah. look down in the water jacket on that front piston right there, she's busted right straight through the cylinder. Yeah. Have you have you had the oil pan off this one yet? No. When I did That's have it off, it looked pretty good. good. Yeah. Check the crank. You know, I want to take the crank out. Even if you got to turn them 10-10, that don't bother me any at all because, yeah. you know. Oh, that's going to be good. So that's why she's still smiling. <laughs> I'm glad you got it because you're the kind of person who can save it and make it work. And a lot of people would just say, nah, it's too far gone. So that's good. That was sort of what, I, what we was all hoping for is if somebody gets some use out of it. Yeah. That's good. That that motor right there, I don't know what who did the maintenance on it when it was running, but there was all kinds of loose parts underneath the manifold. Did you? You never took that manifold off. No. Nope. Good enough. No. Nope. We pulled that manifold off. It was a big old rat's nest underneath there, and there was... Head bolts and really? oh yeah, oddball springs and all kinds of oddball parts and pieces laying down inside the valley. Wow! That when they put that motor together, whoever worked on it left that stuff in there. Wow! <coughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, that must have made some noise once in a while. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Yep. So that's where the progress is on those. Hmm.